Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome back to the channel. So on today's video, I'm gonna be replacing the wheel bearings on my F350. Now this is a pretty simple job to do and I'm only gonna be showing you one side of it. So it should be a pretty short video. Please stay tuned. All that stuff's coming up next. I hope you enjoy the video and please consider liking and subscribing. All right, so I'm about to get started. I've got all my stuff here, all my tools out, and I'm ready to start doing the work. But before I get started, I wanted to give you guys a little bit of backstory of why I'm doing this, and also a little warning to those of you who consider doing this yourself. Now, I originally replaced these hubs back in August of 2021 as kind of a preventive maintenance measure when I did my front brakes. I figured since I was in there doing my rotors and pads, I might as well go ahead and do the wheel bearings while I was at it. And I made the mistake of getting wheel bearings from AutoZone. I got a set of Duralast hub assemblies and these have, prevent, have prematurely failed on me. It's been about seven months since August and my, the wheel bearings are completely trash. So those of you who are considering doing this yourself, be very cautious about where you get your parts from. Anything other than the original equipment, OEM, is, is questionable when it comes to parts like these. So I've got a set of Motorcraft hubs that I ordered off of Amazon and they're a bit more expensive than your AutoZone or your, your normal parts store hubs but in the end it's, it's worth it. Now first thing I had to do is get this wheel off in preparation of doing this job so let me get set up and I'll get the wheel off and then I'll explain to you guys what I'm doing along the way. And before I break all these off, I actually want to show you a little trick that you can do to check your wheel bearings. Typically you would do this with your wheel a little bit higher off the ground, but you grab the top and the bottom and you shake it like this and you can feel this play like this in your wheel will let you know that your wheel bearing is bad. And those of you who are wondering, these lugs are 21 millimeters. I usually torque them to about 110, 120 foot pounds. So yeah, 21s for the hub. I'm gonna get a short extension in there. So take a wrench here and just use the opposing force. There you go. Just keep going. I can get this piece off without taking the caliper off, so I'll do that first. There you go, there's your wheel hub. So now I'm gonna get the caliper off. So the caliper bolts are also a 21. So I've got this string here and when I get this caliper off, I'm gonna tie it up on this, this spring here so I can prevent it from hanging on this soft brake line. All right, so I got my caliper hanging up with that rope and just to make sure there's no tension on this soft brake line. Not the most desirable bend to put in it, but it'll be fine. There's no real tension on it. So the next thing I gotta do is I gotta pull this wheel speed sensor off of, off of here. And then when I'm done with that, I gotta come back here 
and get these nuts off of those studs. And once I get those nuts off, the hub assembly will be able to come right out. And some people would tell you, and it may be true, it may not be, that you should take off the tie rod end so that you can move the steering knuckle as you need it, but I'm not gonna do that. Well, actually, I missed a step. I gotta take out this locking hub right here, so I'm gonna do that right now. That's a Torx bit number 27. There's a gasket between this locking hub and the wheel hub, and I don't have a new one, so I've got to be super careful when I do this so I don't damage that, that gasket. So there's your locking hub, and then there's the gasket I was talking about. I'm going to add a little bit of grease to this because my wheel bearings were bad and they were heating up quite a bit, so I'm going to add a little bit of grease to here when I go to put it back in, but this gasket is uh, just fine. Now here comes what many people would call the tricky part, and that's this snap ring inside of here. There we go, that's better. Snap ring pliers, spread the snap ring apart, comes right out. Not that big of a deal. So now, other than the nuts on the back side, this hub is ready to come off. And I'm gonna take the three bolts for that locking hub and the one bolt for that wheel speed sensor. And I'm gonna put them on the new hub. So the new hub actually came with a new bolt for the wheel speed sensor. So I'll just keep that one. Now I've got to break the torque on the four bolts back there. Now that, that tie rod may actually be in the way, but I'm gonna try it with a ratchet first. I think I can get it with a ratchet. If not, I can put a, a wrench on the ratchet, which is exactly what I'm gonna do. Give me a little leverage. The big problem you have with parts on your, your wheel assemblies, your rotors, your lug nuts, your hubs, uh, all of this to your ball joints, your tie rod ends, is they like to seize themselves on there. Especially in like East Coast vehicles where there's a lot of rust and stuff. So getting your hub out of the knuckle could be a big problem for some people. I don't anticipate, anticipate it being much of a problem for me, but it's something you gotta watch out for. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna tap on this guy a little bit and it should come right out. If you can, maybe get a screwdriver in there and try to leverage it off. Now my hubs, like I said, are an exception, not the rule. This isn't gonna be as easy for a lot of you. But what you can do is you could tap on the lugs on the back. I've seen this video from 1A Auto and they put a short socket and an extension on the nut in the back and they actually use the truck steering to press, to press the hub out. So mine is off. And then you have your brake dust shield. Don't forget to put that back on. And there's your wheel bearing. All right, so now that that's out, I'm gonna clean this up and then start getting ready to put the other one in.
All right, so that's nice and clean. I'm gonna get the other one in there. All right, so I'm about to get going on putting the new one in here. I have this Molly Graph multi-purpose grease. So that's what I'm gonna be greasing the locking hub with. And I'm also gonna put a little bit of lube, a little bit of lube on that packing before I put the new hub in. So this is the new O-ring or packing that will go around the hub. And that's what I'm gonna be greasing before I put it in. And these are the new studs. And it also comes with a new snap ring. All right. So I've got the new hub here. I'm just gonna take the new studs and put them in the back of the hub here. Make sure everything's nice and clean. And these things go in really smoothly, so you don't really need anything, any tools to really put them in the ring. And since this is a little bit more accessible, I'm gonna use the residual grease from the, uh, the axle there. That's not gonna be enough, so I'm gonna have to use some from the tube too. All right, so that O-ring's nice and lubed up. I'm gonna get this guy back in there. Now, on this new wheel speed sensor, they got it all greased up and it's greased internally. So you wanna make sure that when you're putting this thing on there, you don't get any dirt in there. And you don't compromise your new uh, wheel speed sensor. And like I said, don't forget your dust shield. And you wanna make sure that this hole is oriented up. So you can see, I've got the O-ring nice and lubed up with grease. And this is the grease inside of there that I was talking about. You don't want to get any dirt in that hole. And this is going to go on this way. This little flap right here will go. This is where the uh, wheel speed sensor slides through. So you want this facing up. And then as I tighten the nuts on the back side, this will pull in as much as it needs to. So let me go ahead and do that real quick. And I'm gonna run everything down with the socket wrench until it gets, it gets snug and then I'll torque them. And seeing that there's a gap in the flange, I actually don't wanna pull one corner in too far at once. So I'm gonna go, I'm gonna four point it crisscross until everything kind of settles in. So I see this side, pull, this corner pulling in. I'm gonna stop and I'll move to the next corner. Same thing. I see that one pulling in. Stop, move to the next corner. All right, stop, move to the next corner. Next corner. All right, so they're just getting pretty snug. So next I'll torque them. So we're set up at, if you can read that, we're set up at 120 foot pounds, and that's what I'm gonna to torque it to. This part can be a wee bit tricky because of the length of the torque wrench, but it's ratcheting, so that saves you a little bit of trouble. Yeah, that's gonna be hard. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get in the truck and I'm gonna turn the wheel all the way to the right to give me more clearance. Now see, what that's gonna do, it's gonna allow me to get my torque wrench out past the wheel well. There we go. So all four of those are torqued. All right, so I'm gonna straighten the wheel back up and uh, finish putting this guy together. All right, so now before I get going any further, I'm gonna put this wheel speed sensor on. All right. Up in here, 
is your little plug for the ABS sensor, the wheel speed sensor. You want to unplug that guy, and then we're going to unclip it, pull the wire off, and I'm going to route the new one. And honestly, I probably wouldn't replace this sensor if it didn't come with a new one. But since it comes with a new one, why not replace it? All right, so now that all of that's together, I'm gonna throw a little bit of grease in there, put the locking hub on, and then I can put the caliper or the rotor on, and then the caliper. Actually, I forgot, I gotta get that snap ring in there first. I'm actually gonna pull out on the axle real quick just to make sure that it didn't recess in too far, so I can make sure I can get that the snap ring in. is in I heard it snap now I'm gonna crease this locking hub and put it back in should be plenty and this is the, the dowel pin the alignment pin that I was telling you about so it's ready to go in there we go So now I'm going to put the wheel hub back on there. So now, I'm just gonna put that caliper on real quick. Now, I just gotta put the wheel on. 
so you can see locking hub is in there pull these lug nuts off these are all torqued calipers on it's torqued the brake pads are in properly my brake line is good it's not twisted the wrong direction my wheel speed sensor is all hooked up correctly wheel spins there's nothing dragging I pulled the uh, the dust cover off the back of the rotor because it was dragging a little bit now I've only got 10% left on this battery so all I got left to do is put that wheel back on and then I'll be done with the wheel bearing and you can imagine the other side is exactly the same so this is gonna be the end of the video I hope you guys enjoyed I hope you guys learned something uh, until next time uh, I'll catch you guys later I hope you enjoyed the video. Please consider liking and subscribing.